Good evening, everyone. I would like to call our meeting to order. I'm Spiro Spinakis, the president of the Worcester District Medical Society, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to our virtual event. As you are all aware, the pandemic led to the cancellation of our annual business meeting, which is usually held in April. This led to some unfinished business for us. The canceled meeting is typically when the newly elected president is installed. Dr. Passy and I made, that, made the transition at that time, and I have served as your president since then. Recently, we met at the district headquarters at Mechanics Hall to complete a ceremonial transition in a pre-recorded event, which we will now share. This will be followed by a presentation by, by a presentation of awards by the scholarship committee, and then on to a presentation by the awards committee. We hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sade Passi, and I am your immediate past president. It is not usual to have the immediate past president welcoming you at the fall business meeting at our Worcester District Medical Society. But there is nothing usual about the year 2020. I am here today to finish some of the traditions and customary duties of the president, which were not accomplished during the annual meeting in April 2020. I cannot believe that two years have already passed since I was named as the president of the Worcester District Medical Society. It has been a great honor and a privilege for me to serve the society. As you know, the year 2018 was a year of transition. We had changes of the guards at the position of the executive director and treasurer. And the year 2019 was a year of change and celebration. With the help and the hard work of Dr. Dale McGee and Martha, the changes we were able to make in the IT, communication, and financial management of our society over the last two years will be long-lasting and put our society on a strong footing for the future. There is still a lot more work needs to be done, and I hope that we all will, with your support, will be able to accomplish that. I am very proud of the uh, 225th anniversary gala event we were able to put together during this September 2019 to celebrate the historical milestone of our society and raise funds for our scholarship committee. There were over 250 attendees at the gala and we were able to raise over $70,000. After the expenses, we donated $24,000 to our scholarship fund. My heartfelt thanks to Martha, Melissa, Catherine, and Francine for their hard work in putting the gala together. I am also very grateful to Dr. Dale McGee and his team for producing the History of a Statistic Medical Society video, which is something our members will enjoy for many years to come. I know it is not easy for many of you to volunteer for the society but I am very grateful to all of those who are able to volunteer to fill in the role of chair or member of the different committees and serve as a delegate at Massachusetts Medical Society. It takes a lot of personal and professional time on your part, and we are very grateful that you consider doing this. Over the last 35 years, I have been involved with many cultural, political, and professional organizations and while I was in a leadership position, the Reinhold Neighbors Serenity Prayer has always guided me in my thinking and my action, which says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. I hope in past two years, I have not stepped down anybody's toes. I apologize if Unknowingly, I had done so. These last two years had been wonderful experience for me to learn and understand the inner working of both Worcester District Medical Society and Massachusetts Medical Society. I am very grateful to my wife, Karen, and many of you, especially Martha and Melissa, for your support and help you extended me during my presidency. 
I am very grateful for the kindness and friendship I received, which I will cherish for the rest of my life. I would like to close with a Hindi poem, which says, Ujale apni yaadon ke hamare saath rehne do, na jane kis gali mein jindagi ki sham ho jaye. It translates as, let your memories be my guiding lights during the dark days of my life. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, sir. Now, it is my great honor and a privilege to introduce to you our president, Dr. Spiro Spanakis, and ask him to please accept this pin as a presidential pin and take over the gavel to continue with the responsibilities and duties of the president of Oxford District Medical Society. On behalf of the executive committee and all of our members, I'd like to express our gratitude for your leadership and service to the District Medical Society during your tenure. Your accomplishments are many as the society went through several transitions including a successful gala here at Mechanics Hall that raised $25,000 for the scholarship fund. The monies raised will support medical students for years to come, adding to your legacy as president of the society. We, appreci we always appreciated your warm smile and pleasant demeanor, and we can't thank you enough for all that you've done. As a token of our appreciation, we'd like to present you with this chair from the Worcester District Medical Society that we hope uh, will adorn your desk and office. Thank you. Thank you very much. So having grown up in Worcester, standing before you as president of the Worcester District Medical Society is quite special to me, perhaps even a little surreal. I am a Worcesterite through and through, attending elementary school at Flag Street School before going on to Bancroft School and eventually Holy Cross for college. After medical school, where I spent a few months at St. B's as a medical student, I became a UMass lifer, completing my internship and residency there before becoming an attending pediatric anesthesiologist in 2007. But my story at UMass began in 1989 when I first volunteered there. As I roamed the halls of the hospital with my bright red polo shirt, which I still have, although it doesn't fit as well as it used to. I admired the doctors and other clinical staff bustling about caring for patients. Today, each time I see a volunteer in the halls with that same bright red shirt because they haven't changed the color, I recall my days and remember how fortunate I am to be part of that institution. I want to thank my past chairs and current chair, Dr. Matthias Walsh and Dr. Alice Kozar, for, for supporting me in my involvement in organized medicine. I also want to thank members of the UMass Hospital Administration, including Dr. Dixon, Dr. Tosi, and Dr. Carson, for supporting my professional development. Now, while I hoped that I would be making this address to you all in person, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has altered our plans. But rest assured, the District Medical Society members and staff have quickly adapted to the new norm and continue the society's work. Worcester Medicine, our magazine, will be publishing its third issue related to COVID soon. I want to thank Dr. Jane Lockery 
who has been the magazine's editor for her many years of service as she steps down from this role at the beginning of the year. This past weekend, we gathered with the organized medical student, the organized medicine, excuse me, committee at UMass at Wachusa Mountain. The executive committee and I are excited about this newly formed partnership, increasing involvement among medical students at the district medical society level. Moving forward, we are focused on modernizing our society. You will notice a new look and feel to Worcester Medicine, our magazine, after we change publishers under the direction of the publications committee chaired by Dr. Robert Sorrenti. You will also notice a new website at WDMS.org. And behind the scenes, we are modernizing our financial management structure to position us for the future under the leadership of treasurer, Dr. Gail McGee. We have an amazing, amazing leadership team that I have the pleasure of working with, including Dr. Giles Whalen, our vice president, and Dr. Mary Ann Felice, our secretary. I look forward to working with all of you as president. Please feel free to reach out to me or our staff. Martha Wright, our executive director, who shepherds us in the right direction every day, or Melissa, our administrative assistant, who greets us with an inviting smile at every WDMS event. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this virtual event. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Michelle Pugnier, the chair of the scholarship committee, for her presentation. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, officially, uh, President Spinakis, and thank you for your introduction. A warm welcome to you all this evening, and thank you for joining us as we celebrate and recognize the achievements of others through this award ceremony. It is their accomplishments that sustain us and keep us inspired and committed to the highest values of our profession, even in these most challenging of times. As in years past, our tradition is to start off our awards presentation where the medical profession begins, here at our medical schools and with our amazing medical students. And tonight we recognize them not only as scholarship award recipients, but also as tomorrow's next generation of physicians and future WDMS members. But before introducing the students, um, let us recognize the members of our scholarship committee whose dedication and hard work make the scholarship program what it is today. And I will just read their names. Uh, they are Drs. Ken Crowland, our trustee, Dr. Janet Abrahamian, Dr. Robert Bissett, Dr. Susan George, Dr. Heidi Leftwich, Dr. Jane Lockery, Dr. Susan Moran, Dr. Martha Waite, Dr. Stuart Weisberger, and Dr. Giles Whalen. And um, a warm welcome to our newest member of the committee who will begin in 2021, Dr. Rebecca Kowaloff. Thank them all. And I'd also like to thank others who have been extra special in having us do this work. Dr. Ken Crowland, an internist at Reliant Medical Group, who has served as our trustee of the scholarship fund and a valued member of our scholarship committee since 2001. Thank you so much, Dr. Crowland. And of course, our deep appreciation as always to Martha and Melissa who make our committee work possible, especially in these trying times. 2020 has been a year that none of us could have ever imagined. But with the teamwork of Martha, Melissa and our committee membership, we, have, we rose to the challenge of selecting a truly outstanding group of 20 scholarship recipients. And now I have the pleasure and privilege of introducing each of them to you. We will start our evening with the 2020 Worcester District Medical Society scholarships. We have seven of these scholarships awards made possible by generous donations from the WDMS membership. And let me begin by introducing Catherine Catley. She's in the class of 2022 at the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine. A few words about Catherine. She grew up in Grafton knowing she wanted a career in medicine. She fell in love with pediatrics after working as a nurse's aide on the bone marrow transplant unit at Tufts Children's Hospital. As a student, she continues her love of pediatrics, doing elementary school mentoring 
and teaching for a nutrition program for fourth and fifth graders. Now in her third year, she's completing her clinical rotations, hoping to return to Massachusetts for residency and caring for the children of New England. Congratulations to Catherine. Next, we have Toquin Vu, class of 2022 at the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine. Toquin is a third year medical student at Unicom and currently completing her clinical rotations at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor. She's leaning towards a career in internal medicine, though she is keeping an open mind as she continues with her clinical rotations. As a native of Shrewsbury, Toquin wishes to return to the Worcester area in the coming years to serve the community that helped her shape her identity as a Vietnamese American and future osteopathic physician. Congratulations, Token. Mark Poirier, class of 2022 at Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Mark will be receiving the Julius Tegelberg Scholarship Award from the WDMS. A third year medical student, Mark is now in his clinical rotations that have only strengthened his excitement and determination for a career in medicine. He has always had a special interest in sports and exercise and is looking forward to pursuing a career in physical medicine and rehabilitation to help people return to the lives that they love. He also wants to continue to give back to his community as part of his future residency training and professional practice. Congratulations, Mark. Kimberly Burke, class of 2023 at UMass Medical School receiving the Dr. Burke Gutterman Scholarship Award from the WDMS. Now a second year student at UMass, Kimberly has always had a strong interest in community service. At UMass, she's been involved in community work that's focused on determinants of health in Worcester and in Springfield. She co-leads a read aloud project that supports school age kids at home during the COVID pandemic and serves as coordinator for our UMass Asylum Clinic. Kim is dedicated to improving community health and is most grateful for her WDMS award to help her meet this goal. Congratulations, Kimberly. Rebecca Tui, class of 2022 at UMass Medical School. Rebecca will be receiving the Dr. Sanfrey Lillistrom Scholarship Award from the WDMS. Now in her third year at UMass, Rebecca serves as a student body representative and volunteer clinic coordinator at the St. Anne Street Clinic. She's also enrolled in the Global Health Pathway and has participated in a medical student exchange to Sichuan, China. As a Worcester native, she's grateful for being able to serve the diverse community she grew up in and her current career goals include critical care, global health and women's health. Congratulations, Rebecca. Michelle Chabot, class of 2021 at UMass Medical School. She will be receiving the Dr. Leonard J. Morse Scholarship Award from the WDMS. Michelle is a fourth year medical student here at UMass and a graduate of UMass Amherst. As a UMass student, she has currently been involved in the WDMS as a student member serving on the Student Women's Caucus, the Public Health and Public Relations Committees as well. Currently, she's pursuing her life's passion for urologic health and is applying for urology residencies. Her career interests are in urban life and public health, sexual health, as well as quality and systems improvement research. Congratulations, Michelle. And the last of our WDMS recipients this evening, Laura Knappick, class of 2022 at the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine. She will be receiving the Lillian A. E. Luxus Scholarship Award. Raised in Northbridge, Laura is a third year student completing clinical rotations in Bangor, Maine. She is the founding member and director of operations for Maine COVID sitters a student-led organization providing childcare and home support to healthcare workers in the Portland area. 
The group was recently awarded the American Osteopathic Association's COVID-19 Initiative Award. And Laura is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and is interested in OBGYN as well as family planning. Congratulations to Laura. So now we turn to um, our next set of awards. Uh, these are the 2020 Neberg Scholarship Awards. We are presenting five Herbert E. Neberg Scholarship Awards this evening. And we are most grateful to Suzanne Niebergs for her generous sponsorship of these five awards in the name of her late husband, Dr. Herbert E. Niebergs. Let me begin by introducing our first Niebergs Scholarship Award recipient. Alec Elaine, class of 2022 at UMass Medical School. Now a third year student at UMass, Alec has a long standing commitment to research in pediatric oncology, both in college and while at UMass. He's a leader for the LGBTQ plus advocacy through the UMass QMass program and is currently working on producing a pride list for UMass to expand visibility and informal mentorship for our LGBTQ community. Going forward, his career interests remain broad and include pediatrics, radiology, and dermatology. Congratulations, Alec. Next, we have Tamika Isaac, class of 2023, the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Tamika was born and raised in Worcester County. She's a WPI graduate in biochemistry and before medical school worked as a scribe in internal medicine and rheumatology while receiving a master's of science in forensic medicine. Now a third year student, she has remained actively involved in her biochemistry research while continuing her interests in pathology, community service volunteering and public health. Congratulations, Tamika. Kelsey Jones. Class of 2021 at UMass Medical School. She's our third Nieberg Scholarship Award recipient this evening. She's a fourth year medical student and during her time at UMass, she has enjoyed volunteering as a peer mentor and serving as the student leader for a service group called Power of Presence. She's also actively engaged in research on goals of care decision-making in the neuro ICU and Kelsey will be applying to neurology residency programs this year. Congratulations, Kelsey. Kara Kennedy, class of 2021. Kara grew up in Harvard, Mass, and attended the College of the Holy Cross, where she studied chemistry. At UMass, she enjoys volunteering her time as a peer mentor to support the success of other students and assisting at the free clinics. As a fourth year student, she's applying to general surgery this fall and looks forward to, to serving her community next year as a surgeon in training. Congratulations to Kara. And the last of our Nieberg Scholarship Award recipients this evening, Mina Zaki, class of 2023 at Tufts University School of Medicine. Mina is a third year student at Tufts, having received a bachelor's degree from UMass Amherst in biochemistry and molecular biology. He's grateful for his WBMS award and is dedicated to ensuring that other Worcester County students reach their educational and professional goals in the future. Congratulations to Mina. Now we turn to our named scholarship awards for 2020. We will present four named scholarship awards that are made possible by the generous support and sponsorship from our local central mass healthcare systems. Our first named scholarship award recipient is Vanessa Villamarin, class of 2021 at UMass Medical School. Vanessa is receiving the Reliant Medical Group Dr. M. Elizabeth Fletcher Scholarship Award. She was born in New York but raised in Ecuador from age seven, one to seven. She's a first generation college graduate and the first in her family to attend medical school. After graduating from UMass Amherst, she
She worked here at the medical school as a research coordinator supporting postpartum depression studies while also volunteering at the Worcester Free Clinics. Now a fourth year student, she remains passionate about caring for underserved populations and is pursuing a residency in obstetrics and gynecology. Congratulations to Vanessa. Cindy Lee, class of 2023 at UMass Medical School. Cindy is receiving the Gilbert E. Levinson Scholarship Award by the St. Vincent Hospital medical staff. A second year medical student at UMass, Cindy was raised here in Worcester and is very happy to be back here for medical school. She went to UMass Amherst for her undergraduate degree and looks forward to a field where she can reach out to and connect with her community. She hopes to be able to advocate for and give back to underrepresented populations as her education and training as a future physician progresses. Congratulations to Cindy. Brennan Daigle, class of 2022 at UMass Medical School. Brennan is receiving the UMass Memorial Healthcare Dr. Samuel Pickens Scholarship Award. He grew up in Holden, raised by a single mom who worked two jobs to support his family. Since age 13, He's worked many other jobs to support himself, including selling merchandise at Gillette Stadium since 2007. I imagine he's a true Pats fan. As a second year student at UMass, Brennan's volunteer work includes food insecurity, supporting first generation low income students and helping start the first community garden at UMass Medical School. His interest is primary care with the goal to practice family medicine in Worcester. Thomas Tanya, class of 2023, also from UMass Medical School. Thomas is receiving the Milford Regional Medical Center's John A. Rolfe Book Award. A second year student at UMass, Thomas grew up in Worcester and is thrilled to return to his hometown to medical school. A graduate of UMass Amherst, he's excited to be learning medicine in the city he grew up in since it gives him the opportunity to give back directly to the community that made him who he is today. He looks forward to learning more, working with the Worcester community as he progresses through medical school and his future career. Congratulations to Thomas. Finally, uh, we turn to the 2020 named book awards. We will be presenting five book awards this evening, and we extend our deep appreciation to our book award sponsors for their generous support. So let me first introduce our first award recipient this evening, Nathan Tabor, class of 2023 at UMass Medical School. And Nathan is the recipient of the Amaral Family Book Award. He is a second year medical student at UMass in the PERCH track and PERCH stands for population based urban and rural community health. Nathan's clinical interests include family medicine, emergency medicine, preventive medicine and urban health. He's particularly interested in the impact of the physical structure or built environment of neighborhoods and its impact on health. He hopes to continue to learn more about these issues moving forward and to incorporate a deeper understanding of social determinants of health into his future practice. Congratulations, Nathan. Stephanie Craig, class of 2022 at the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Stephanie is the recipient of the Paulette Griffin Pugmair Book Award. She's a third year medical student at Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, and she received a BS in biology and a master's degree in plant biology from UMass Amherst. She's currently completing clinical rotations at the Arnott Ogden Medical Center in Elmira, New York. A Massachusetts native, she hopes to return home for residency and serving local populations back here in her home state of Massachusetts. 
Congratulations, Stephanie. Kendall Furtick, class of 2023, University of Massachusetts Medical School. Kendall is the recipient of the Joyce Corriglia and David Williams Book Award. Kendall is a second year student at UMass in the same perch track as Nathan. She leads several student groups focused on pediatrics, emergency medicine, Spanish, and charity backpacks for foster care children. Outside of class time, she's involved in educating um, others through focused research, also pediatric homelessness, and access to pediatric trauma centers. She is also a student board member for the Mass Chapter of the American Association of Pediatrics and the Emergency Medicine Residents Association. Congratulations to Kendall. And this year, we are pleased to announce a new book award for 2020, the Physicians Insurance Book Award. This award establishes an award in support of the Worcester, District, Worcester District's Women's Caucus, recognizing the career of longtime board member Najmo Sama, Nikki Ikrui, MD. Now let me introduce this year's recipient for the Physician Insurance Book Award, Ryan Saliga, class of 2021 at Creighton University School of Medicine. A Central Mass native, Ryan graduated from UMass before continuing on to Creighton School of Medicine in Omaha, Nebraska. Now in his fourth year, he's applying to family medicine residencies with the goal of a full spectrum primary care practice to help fill the growing medical needs of rural underserved communities. He's enjoying volunteering at a medical clinic for a homeless shelter and is excited for opportunities in both domestic and international service work for the underserved as part of his future practice. And that concludes the presentation of our 2020 scholarship award recipients. So we wish them all congratulations, all 20 of them. And though we can't offer them the usual round of applause that we would be having right now at the Beechwood, let's zoom to them all of our help, heartfelt congratulations. And another opportunity is to say thank you to all of you, for it is your support that make our scholarship program possible. And should you be considering to donate, um, you will see that we don't have tables and chairs and the little envelopes for pledge cards that we usually have at the Beechwood. But what we do have is an amazing new website that makes it so easy to donate. All you need to do is go to the home page up for right hand corner where the red arrow is. Click on the green spot and it'll take you directly to the donation page. It's that easy. So now it is my pleasure uh, to introduce to you all uh, our next speaker, Dr. Michael Hirsch, chair of the WDMS Awards Committee. Uh, it would truly surprise me if anyone joining us this evening didn't know Dr. Hirsch and all that he has done for the Medical Society. Even if you knew it all, I can never resist the opportunity to sing his praises. So here goes. Dr. Michael Hurst is professor of surgery at UMass Medical School, and he specializes in pediatric surgery, trauma, and critical care. He has been chair of the WDMS Awards Committee since 2018, chair of the Public Health Committee since 2016, and chair of the Public Relations Committee since 2014. He also serves on the executive, personnel, and membership committees. Mike, take it away. And thank you all for being with us this evening. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, this is always of all those things that Michelle has listed that I do for or with the Worcester District Medical Society. Um, I, I love this kind of uh, ceremony because we have so many deserving physicians in our society and in our community. And um, this is a labor of love. I want to start out just by thanking Martha Wright and Melissa Boucher, 
who have helped our uh, awards committee make good choices and have all the information at hand that we need to, to make the choices that you're going to hear about uh, as we go forward. First, I want to then uh, acknowledge the members of our uh, committee. Um, I think you see them here. Uh, Dr. Fred Baker, Dr. Marianne Felice, Dr. Bruce Carlin, Dr. Jane Lockery, Dr. Michelle Pugner, and Dr. Abhijit Rochaudhry. Um, these are wonderful individuals with a, a world of experience in the, in the Worcester District Medical Society uh, infrastructure and the community at large. So it, it gives us a, a real deep uh, bench to make our decisions, which are sometimes very difficult. And the nominees that uh, come in are stellar and it's, it's sometimes hard to make these choices. So uh, thank you committee for uh, being uh, with me and, um, and for helping us make this night possible. Um, so uh, we're gonna go through four different awards and I will talk to you a little bit about what the awards are about and also uh, some of the bio biographical information about our winners. Our winners have recorded responses uh, to the knowledge that they received the award. None of this is a surprise. And um, I hope that you join me in, uh, in applauding their wonderful work. So our first award um, is the uh, A. Jane Fitzpatrick Community Service Award. So this annual award was established by the WDMS to commemorate the lifelong contributions and exemplary efforts of Dr. Fitzpatrick. And the award recognizes a member of the healthcare community for contributions beyond professional duties to improve the health and well being of others. And it should be noted that there is a uh, $200 donation to the charity of the recipient's choice. So this year, um, the um, recipient, Dr. John Broach, who I'll tell you a little bit about in a second, um, has chosen the Worcester County Food Bank as the recipient of his uh, gift. So uh, John Broach, uh, who is um, a phys physician and has a Master of Public Health and an MBA and is an assistant professor of emergency medicine in uh, UMass Memorial, is also the director of disaster medicine and of uh, Worcester EMS and Life Flight within the Department of Emergency Medicine. He was nominated, as you can see, by Dr. Greg Voltoro, who is the chairman of the Department of Emergency Medicine. And also those nominations were uh, uh, supported by Dr. Kavita Babu and, and Dr. Martin Resnick. Um, so uh, John is a wonderful individual. After graduating from Northwestern University School of Medicine, Chicago, Illinois, Dr. Broch uh, completed both his emergency medicine residency and his EMS fellowship at UMass. He received his MPH from Northwestern University Grad School and completed his MBA at George Washington University. He has received numerous awards and most recently spearheaded the field hospital at the DCU Center for our COVID positive population. It is this exemplary work serving our communities during the COVID pandemic that especially has set him apart. In fact, he was one of the first uh, of us to raise concerns for COVID's potential impact on our communities well before the pandemic hit our shores. Aside from all these accomplishments, Dr. Broch is a tireless, humble, and unflappable, compassionate person. He is intensely committed to lead the, the community through COVID-19. John has been a principal force driving our pandemic response in Worcester. His efforts, knowledge, and skills are extraordinary. John was working long hours, seven days a week, and he was encouraged uh, to take some time off to spend with his family. His response was immediate. He said, I'm a disaster guy. This is once in a lifetime experience and I'm not going to miss a minute. It is with this energy and commitment that Dr. Broch has approached all of his work. He is dedicated and compassionate and his selfless efforts to meet the medical needs of our community has made it safer environment for all of us. This award is meant to recognize compassion and dedication to the medical needs of patients and or the public. And he has certainly made significant contributions to that practice. You will not receive a more 
worthy nomination than this for uh, our A.J. Fitzpatrick Community Service Award. So uh, next we will hear from John himself, uh, who will obviously strike you, I think, as the humble person that uh, blows us all away every day. In the city, uh, we affectionately call him Brochi, and um, uh, the dude just brings it every day. Good evening, thank you so much for this award. And thank you to Dr. Votoro, Dr. Resnick, and Dr. Wabu for nominating me. Thank you to the Worcester District Medical Society and Martha Wright and her staff for um, awarding this uh, honor and for continuing to recognize the important work of the healthcare community in central Massachusetts. Over the last many months, we've, as a community, faced one of the most incredible public health challenges uh, that we have faced in decades. And I think our community has demonstrated incredible resilience and fortitude in the face of incredible adversity. Uh, and I'm really proud to be a part of that community and to have been able to make a contribution to uh, the work that has been done in central Massachusetts. But the work that we've done has really truly been a team effort across uh, the city, uh, the Worcester, campuses of UMass Memorial Medical Center and all of its affiliated hospitals and uh, the state of Massachusetts. The most important people in my team, though, are my home team, my wife, uh, Katie, and my daughter, Hope, who have supported me for the last many months as we've battled this coronavirus pandemic. I also wanted to mention that all of the first responders out there have families who have made similar sacrifices, who have been away from their loved ones, and who have allowed their loved ones to put themselves in harm's way for the community over the last nine to 10 months. And those are incredible uh, and important sacrifices to recognize as well. Our work at the DCU Center was a collaboration between the city of Worcester, the state of Massachusetts, and UMass Memorial Medical Center, um, starting with Dr. Dixon, our CEO, and many other members of our care team, including the hospital medicine group, emergency medicine, and our emergency nursing group. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge Peter Lancet, Sharon Radinsky, Jody Darby, and Greg Leslie, Dave McManus, and Rick Forrester, who are sort of the core team in terms of clinical care, and all of the many, many folks that worked with us. I also want to acknowledge the city manager's office, especially uh, Nicole Valentine and Megan Gomes, um, for their incredible partnership in the state of Massachusetts Department of Public Health. One group of first responders in particular that deserves mention is Worcester EMS and UMass Life Flight. They, their uh, first responders, uh, paramedics and nurses were there 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the DCU Field Hospital uh, for the six weeks that it was open and we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. That was in addition to continuing to care for the citizens of Shrewsbury and Worcester and Central Massachusetts through our Life Flight program. Um, they've made incredible sacrifices and contributions as well, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Again, to my home team, Katie and Hope, thank you so much. And to the whole Central Mass community, we're going to get there. Thank you, and we'll keep fighting. Okay. Well, I think you can see from... Uh... Dr. Broch's response that uh, he's as humble a, and as uh, generous as he is uh, brilliant. So um, our next uh, award that we're gonna be talking about is the uh, WDMS Career Achievement Award, which was established to honor a member of the Worcester District Medical Society who has demonstrated compassion and dedication to the medical needs of patients and the public and who has made significant contributions to the practice of medicine. So uh, this year's recipient was nominated by Dr. Terry Flott, our um, Dean and Provost at UMass Medical, and Sheldon Benjamin of the Department of Psychiatry and supported by Drs. Ma uh, Marie Hobart, Saul Levin, and Paul Summergrad. Um, so it's Dr. Jeffrey Geller, a Professor of Psychiatry at UMass, and I'll read you a little bit of his bio here. After graduating from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and completing his internship at Philadelphia General Hospital, Dr. Geller completed a psychiatric residency at NIMH Fellowship in Primary Care Medicine at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston. 
and he later completed an MPH at the Harvard School of Public Health. In 79, Dr. Geller began working at Northampton State Hospital under a UMMS contract with the Massachusetts Department of Mental Health, initially as a training director and then as a CMO. With exception of three years from 1983 to 1985 at the University of Pittsburgh, Dr. Geller has worked 38 years at UMass Medical School. Aaron Lazar, then the chair of psychiatry, recruited Dr. Geller back to UMS in 85 as director of public sector psychiatry, a role he held for 28 years. Dr. Geller is a prolific writer, speaker, and a teacher with over 100 peer-reviewed articles and over 150 book chapters and reviews, over 250 invited talks and meeting presentations, editorial board membership or reviewer of 30 of 28 journals and 20 journals, 20 awards, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 20 awards for human rights in the public sector for his advocacy work. Dr. Geller has passionately devoted his career to the medically compromised public sector psychiatric population in central Massachusetts and throughout the Commonwealth. He is known throughout the U.S. and internationally as one of the most prominent voices advocating for public sector psychiatric patients. So he is more than deserving of a career achievement award. And um, here is his uh, uh, speech to receive the award. Good evening. I'm glad we could all be together this evening, uh, even if it's virtual, uh, a fashion of gathering we've all gotten quite used to. Uh, I am delighted to be the recipient of the 2020 Worcester District Medical Society Career Achievement Award. I have to tell you quite frankly, when I first got the email, I thought to myself, hmm, maybe they sent it to the wrong person. But it was confirmed, it's me, and here I am, delighted again. I want to thank Drs. Sheldon Benjamin, Chair of the Department of Psychiatry, and uh, Terry Flott, Dean of UMass Medical School, for their nomination for this prestigious award. And I would like to thank those who supported this nomination, Drs. Saul Levin, Dr. Paul Sumgrad, and Dr. Marie Hobart. And I would like to thank all of you for being here to join me in this celebration. I'd like to tell you a story. I've told it occasionally before, but it seems so appropriate tonight. When I was finishing my fellowship, which as an aside, was a fellowship sponsored by NIMH Psychiatry in primary care, in which I was embedded in a primary care clinic. Points out how long we've been working on the integration of psychiatry and medicine since this was in the late 1970s. The chairman of the Department of Psychiatry near the end of that fellowship called me into his office. And he said, Jeffrey, I understand you're going to Western Massachusetts to work in a public psychiatric hospital. I said, yes, that's true. He looked at me and he said, as your chairman, I find myself in a position of needing to give you some advice. First, he said, you should understand that if you leave Boston, you can never come back to Boston. Uh, it's not possible to return uh, and uh, build up the base you would need to function as a psychiatrist in the city. I told him I didn't entirely understand that, but I was going to leave Boston for Western Massachusetts. And if my plans ever change, I'd have to deal with it at that time. He said he wanted to tell me something else. That what he told me was more concerning to me at the time. 
and has been ever since. The chairman told me that if I left this prestigious Boston program and went to a public psychiatric hospital, people could think only two things, and these are in his words. You are either an alcoholic or a closet homosexual. I was a little taken aback. I didn't entirely understand that. But I said to him that I knew what I was, that I couldn't be concerned about that, and I was going to follow my passion. He looked at me somewhat dubiously and wished me well. My entire career has been in the public sector, and with the exception uh, of a year away as a Robert Wood Johnson Health Policy Fellow, and two years at the University of Pittsburgh, I have been involved with the public sector in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts my entire career. In thinking about what this had meant to me, I was drawn to a poem by Robert Frost. If I might quote the last stanza. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. In my life, it has made all the difference. I extend my gratitude uh, to all here tonight, and to many who are not able to be here for the help they have given me on the way. Thank you, and good night. Thank you, Dr. Geller. I love that poem. Um, so our next uh, recipient, this is an award called the Editor's Award. It is, it is not given every year. It used to be known as the Wisteria Award. It's presented to someone who's made an outstanding contribution to our magazine effort, which uh, used to be called Worcester Medical News and now is called Worcester Medicine. And as it's been uh, spoken about by uh, President Spinakis, uh, it has a new look, it has an, a new feel, and uh, thanks to the uh, incredible work of uh, Jane Lockery and, and, and Martha Wright, we, we really have uh, even more pride in that publication because it's not just the words that are beautiful, but the presentation is really much more beautiful. Um, so this gentleman that we're giving this award to is um, uh, Jane's predecessor uh, as editor on the magazine, uh, Dr. Paul Steen. Uh, Dr. Steen uh, graduated from Downstate Medical Center in SUNY uh, in Brooklyn in 1965, and he completed his residency in internal medicine and was a chief medical resident at Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn before he completed two years in the Navy on Guam. Then he served 15 years in private practice of internal medicine in Southbridge, Mass. Following this, he worked in the corporate world at MediQual Systems and McKesson HBOC as Vice President of Clinical Development until his retirement in 2005. For the Worcester District Medical Society, Dr. Steen served as President of the Society in 1982 and Editor of Worcester Medicine from 2005 until 2012. In retirement, Paul has become a Master Gardener for Massachusetts Horticultural Society and a docent at the Worcester Art Museum. And he has worked with medical students, parenthetically, uh, to help them increase their powers of observation uh, what, just by studying some of the magnificent works at our gem of a museum, the Worcester Art Museum. I will also say you've heard uh, uh, mention of uh, Martha's predecessor, Joyce Coriglia, who um, this year, uh, uh, for the second year, uh, donated a scholarship award uh, to one of our worthy students. Uh, Joyce used to chair the meetings that Dr. Steen was on, and I served on that committee. 
And he would get a separate award from me tonight, if I could, for Christmas meetings in the world. We never went one second over one hour in any of the meetings that we had. Um, and, and we got everything done. There was never a feeling of being rushed. There was never a feeling of being uh, shortchanged in our discussion, but he, he got it done. I, I can see where he uh, excelled both in the medical world and the corporate world so easily. Uh, so uh, Dr. Steen, I, I salute you. I think this is a wonderful thing that Jane uh, nominated you uh, along with the entire Worcester District uh, Medical Society editorial board. We, we uh, certainly seconded and, um, and support this, this award being given to you tonight. And uh, here is uh, Dr. Steen's uh, acceptance speech. Hi, it feels strange receiving this award since it feels like only yesterday I was awarding it to my predecessor. However, it turns out it was actually seven or eight years ago. Back then, this award was called the Wisteria Award. We have kept the tradition alive by adding the Wisteria flower to the uh, vase. I would like to thank the Worcester District Medical Society for the award, but more important, for giving me the opportunity to serve as editor for seven years. These were fun and exciting years. When I became editor, I was tasked with two main goals. One, to make the content more relevant and even controversial. And two, to improve the look of the magazine by producing it on better paper and visually more attractive. We accomplish these goals by increasing the publication from four to six times a year and searching for what was the most controversial and trying to have both sides of the issue uh, write articles for the magazine. We also expanded the uh, editorial board to include nursing, pharmacology, and other non-members to make it more truly Worcester medicine. As editor, the most important thing for me was how good the editorial board was, and mine was the best. Thank you again for this is truly an honor. Thank you so much, Dr. Steen, well-deserved. Um, so the, the last award we'll be talking about tonight um, is uh, an award that's, uh, I guess, really long overdue. It's long overdue because it would have been presented in April at our spring business meeting, as uh, Dr. Spinaka said, that meeting was canceled. Um, and uh, Tim Hopkins had been notified about his receiving the Mass Medical Society, Worcester District Medical Society Community Clinician of the Year Award uh, in the September meeting of last year, 2019. Um, this, uh, this award is established to recognize a physician from each of the district medical societies who has made significant contributions to patients and the community. And um, I will tell you a couple of personal things about uh, my observation about Tim Hopkins in a moment, but uh, know that he was nominated by his son, who is an emergency medicine physician, Dr. Jeffrey Hopkins. And... Um, we, we, we like to keep this one in the family. They're, they're both great contributors to uh, Worcester Medicine. Um, so uh, after graduating from Harvard Medical School, uh, Tim Hopkins pursued his residency in surgery and urology at Children's Medical Center and subsequently trained as a fellow in urology at the Peter Bent Brigham Hospital. From there, he practiced at UMass Medical Center as an attending physician and associate professor. Dr. Hopkins has authored countless publications, has given presentations at local, regional, and national meetings, held dozens of faculty and committee titles, and has received multiple honors and awards, including being selected as a top doctor by his peers each year since 2001. For over 40 years, Dr. Hopkins has been extremely dedicated to his patients, to the craft of urology, and to teaching residents and students where he has devoted his life to medicine and the betterment of his patients. He has actively participated in several organizations, including the WDMS, since 1977. 
And I will tell you that there were many, many difficult years for us here in the pediatric subspecialties uh, where there were no other experts on uh, pediatric urology other than Dr. Hopkins. And you could call on him night or day and uh, he would show up and give expert advice and expert surgery if needed. Um, and there's no more collaborative person than Dr. Hopkins. He's also an incredibly terrific straight shooter, not one of those people that uh, says one thing in the meeting and then out in the parking lot, he's saying something else. Uh, so I'm thrilled that uh, his son, Jeff, nominated him. I'm, I'm glad we could catch up with uh, past business that wasn't done. And uh, here is Dr. Hopkins acceptance speech. I am so humbled to have received this award for Community Clinician of the Year. It was truly unexpected. Since my son Jeff, without my knowledge, nominated me, I guess a little nepotism is not so bad. There are many people to thank. First and foremost, I thank my wife Sue and my children, Julie, Jeff, Katie, and Chris, from the bottom of my heart. As all of us realize, it's not always easy being the spouse or children of a physician. There are a lot of late nights, weekends on call, and interference with family activities and sleep. There were also probably exceedingly high expectations and pressures put on my children to do well. A sincere thank you to my partners, Mike Woolen and Philip Asian, and to Patrick McEnany for supporting my nomination. And to each of you referring physicians, thanks so much for having the faith in me to take excellent care of your precious patients. As a poor young boy growing up in South Dakota, I could not have imagined my career in urology. I'm so indebted to so many people who have mentored me and believed in me. I was fortunate to win the South Dakota Medical School Scholarship in high school, which enabled me to go to college and medical school. Along the way, there were many special people to thank. Carl Wagner, USD, encouraged me to go to Harvard Medical School. Dr. Francis Moore, Chief of Surgery at the Brigham, who put his arm around me after what I felt was a disastrous stress surgical interview and told me that I was going to be one of his guys at the Brigham. He always stressed luck favors the prepared mind. My chiefs of urology, Dr. Hartwell Harrison and Ben Giddis, and chiefs of pediatric urology, Alan Reddick and Harvey Hendren at Children's and Mass General. There are many others that mentored me also through the Brigham and Children's Urology Program. My luck continued when I was on our community hospital rotation at Memorial Hospital, and I realized that Jay Howard and Joe Shira were doing advanced urology just as well as was being done at the Harvard hospitals. It was not a difficult decision to make when they offered me a job to come to Worcester to do both pediatric and adult urology rather than staying at the Brigham. My good fortune continued when we had our first outstanding urology resident, Mike Wolin, who we were able to recruit to come into our practice. Fifteen years later, we were able to recruit another outstanding resident, Phil Evasion. We've had an outstanding relationship and practice ever since. Medicine has certainly changed through my 44 years in practice. It seems to want to be more impersonal. We no longer have a doctor's dining room at Memorial where we often met and exchanged ideas and shared problems and found solutions. We actually got to know one another medically and socially. I'm afraid we've lost a lot of the camaraderie. We now have insurers, large health care systems, and government coming at us from all sides with our own agenda. As you know, trying to get physicians to organize is like herding cats. Fortunately, a stabilizing force is the Worcester District Medical Society. Can you believe it was established in 1794? With 2,400 med students and physicians, it continues to have a mission of support in caring for our patients. It is critical that we support such a physician-run organization for the welfare of our patients and for us to have a say with insurers, large health care systems, and the government. Politicians and administrators long ago found how to manipulate us. Like the repair of anastomosis, the key is to divide and conquer. As John Wooden, the famous UCLA basketball coach, said, we need to remember, 
Do not let what you cannot do get in the way of what you can do. The Worcester District Medical Society and Mass Medical Society gives us a voice as long as we remember to put our patients first. We all went into medicine for various reasons, but we all have the underlying thought to do as well as humanly possible to help others. We know as Hippocrates that good health is the greatest human blessing. Thank you once again for this wonderful honor. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Hopkins, for those uh, very uplifting words. Um, I'm going to pass the baton over to our president. I wanted to say a word that um, I, I, I'm amazed at uh, Spiros Bonacus' accomplishments. I, I have watched him since he was a young intern at, uh, at UMass. Um, he has uh, really uh, knocked every clinical and every uh, uh, medical problem um, that he faces out of the out of the park, and I I know he's going to make amazing contributions as he has already for several years to the Worcester District Medical Society, and I just wanted to add my congratulations to Dr. Passy for a wonderful term as president and. Uh, we're really blessed with some great leaders here, and um, I think the future looks bright for our society. So thanks for uh, letting me host this awards part of the ceremony, and uh, uh, I thank you all for attending. Thank you, Dr. Hirsch, for those kind words. Uh, I still remember working with you when, when I was a medical student in the PICU, and uh, you continue to serve as a great mentor and friend and uh, an amazing surgeon. It's, it's always amazing to watch you operate, even after all these years uh, of seeing, seeing it happen. So we're coming to the conclusion of our evening. I wanna thank all of our uh, committee volunteers and chairs for, and, and uh, nominators for putting forward an amazing slate of award winners and scholarship winners. Really a truly amazing group of people. Uh, the Worcester delegation has been busy preparing for the Massachusetts Medical Society interim meeting, which of course will be virtual. I wanna thank all the delegates for their hard work. We're uh, adapting to the new format and I look forward to a great meeting with all of you. Uh, I, again, I wanna thank uh, Martha and Melissa for making this virtual event possible. Um, as you can tell, we are all in our homes and uh, they have been able to coordinate this event across, across the county and uh, really pull it off uh, flawlessly. So I wanna thank them. I'm, I'm really very excited about this. And uh, I think it proves that uh, even though the pandemic has prevented us from being together physically, that we're still together in so many other ways. Uh, I, our calendar of course remains fluid because of the pandemic, uh, but I want to remind you all that we're here for you. I encourage you all to reach out to me or reach out to the staff. Uh, and I wanna thank all, all of you as healthcare providers for all that you do for the Worcester community. And I encourage you all to be safe and to uh, also take care of yourselves. So I hope you all have a great evening and uh, I look forward to working with you over the next two years. Good night.